The Milestone Fundamentals of IP Surveillance Systems provides a foundation of knowledge that will help you as you move on to design, install, configure, troubleshoot, and interact with Milestone IP Surveillance Systems. In this video tutorial, you will learn about different options for reducing the large amount of data in video files. Raw video data takes up an enormous amount of space. For example, a video in 640x480 where each frame uses 0.9 megabytes running at 25 frames per second would generate 22.5 megabytes per second of raw video. This would generate about 2 terabytes of data per day for a single camera recording stream. Given that most systems have multiple cameras and store video for longer periods, we need codecs to reduce the amount of data stored. There are different technologies to code and decode video data in order to compress the size of the video images and reduce file size. Codecs pack and unpack data using the following methods. Lossless compression coding, which uses mathematical reduction of the data for transmission. Lossy compression, which eliminates non-vital data. Lossless compression uses different coding algorithms to compress data without losing any information so the compression process is reversible. For example, an image may have areas of color that do not vary more than 100 pixels. Instead of replicating this data 100 times, a lossless compression algorithm would store the value of the first pixel and then instruct it to repeat 99 more times. Note that the image would then have to be decompressed in order to view it. Lossy compression reduces a file by permanently deleting redundant data. When the file is decompressed, only a part of the original information is still there. Compression is adjustable. High compression results in blocky artifacts. High quality with low compression is virtually identical to the original. Three standard codecs are commonly used for surveillance. One uses frame-based encoding, MJPEG, motion JPEG. The other two use sequence-based encoding, MPEG-4, MPEG-4 Part 2, H.264. MPEG-4 Part 10. Less common standards also exist. MXPEG, JPEG-2000, MPEG-2. Let's look a bit closer at the two most common types. A frame-based encoding codec, like Motion JPEG, MJPEG, consists of a sequence of full JPEG images that have been individually compressed. This example shows a 5 frames per second FPS set of 640 by 480 images. Each image is 60 kilobytes, KB, which generates 300 kilobytes of data per second. A sequence-based encoding codec, like MPEG-4, H.264, and H.265, starts with a full reference frame called the iframe or keyframe. For example, a group of pictures, GOP, starts with a full reference frame, iframe. The iframe is divided into blocks of 8 by 8 pixels which can be grouped into macro blocks of 16 by 16 blocks to be used when generating the subsequent frames. Subsequent frames, called P-frames, show only pixels that have changed from the previous frame. P-frames predict the content based on the previous frame. B-frames are bidirectional frames. They compute the content based on the previous frame and the next frame. B-frames are rarely used in surveillance. Keep in mind that we measure the transmission of data in bits or kilobits per second and not bytes or kilobytes per second. Let's look at an example. The previous frame-based encoding example generates 300 kilobytes per second of data. Watch as we calculate the data transmission rate for this example in megabits per second. Next. Let's look at some trade-offs and considerations when choosing a codec. In order to compress the data, the CPU needs to do more work and, as a result, storage and bandwidth are reduced. To balance CPU load and storage, we need to consider the following. Compression with sequence-based encoding, fixed bandwidth and variable bandwidth, varying the number of iframes, and image size and frame rate. Let's take a closer look at each of these. When considering sequence-based encoding, you'll want to look at streaming bandwidth measured by bitrate, kilobits, or megabits. Implementation varies greatly with manufacturer. Lower bandwidth usage than MJPEG, MPEG-4, 50%, H.264, 75%. Heavier processor demand than with MJPEG, 
more latency due to increased encoding, and beyond 5 frames per second, additional frames require comparatively less bandwidth. If you look at fixed versus variable bandwidth, remember that with fixed bandwidth, image size, frame rate, and bandwidth are the constants, and image quality, compression, is the variable. With variable bandwidth, image size and frame rate are the constants, image quality, compression, is the constant below maximum bandwidth limit, and bandwidth is the variable. When considering varying the number of iframes, Keep in mind that with many adjustable GOP settings, MPEG and H.264, earlier versions of XProtect Corporate have a fixed GOP length of one second, and user-definable GOP size affects the number of large iframes. That said, the benefits of varying the number of iframes include reduced bandwidth needs, which equals reduced hardware cost, and reduced storage needs, also leading to reduced hardware cost. Here's a graphic summarizing advantages and disadvantages of both longer and shorter GOPs. Finally, remember that image size and frames per second FPS, are important in relation to bandwidth, storage, and server requirements. Increasing the live frame rate will increase the network load. Increasing the recording frame rate will increase the storage needed require a faster storage system because of the additional images that have to be saved in the same time, and use more CPU power to run the video database. If you change the settings for image size and FPS on an existing system, video databases will increase or decrease in size. A new calculation is crucial to ensure the recordings can be stored. You just learned about different options for reducing the large amount of data in video files. Visit our YouTube site to view other tutorials in this playlist.